I define neocolonialism as a situation where say, any country, but in this case, you know, Kenya and African countries, where, of course, they are politically independent, they are sovereign states, uh, but they are economic, uh, the economies, and they are enhanced, actually, their culture tend to be subordinate to those of the former uh, colonizing, or, or say the West in general. Yeah, uh, but it affects the mind even more than, but the mind is affected much more than just the economic materiality, yeah, in the sense that there's a tendency for such societies to look for validation from the West. In other words, sometimes the initiatives from within the country are not valued but if the same initiatives are kind of applauded in European capitals, then uh, people have a tendency to say, oh, that's good, you know. Uh, uh, so it's really a mental structure that has to be, uh, that African people have to be aware, yeah, in a way, because what is the colonialism of the economy and colonialism of the politics is easy to detect. The one of the mind uh, is sometimes the harder to either detect, both to detect and eradicate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the question of languages then become very important in this respect. Uh, because uh, the, the languages of power in most post-colonial African countries are still European languages. So whether in Kenya or, some, or Senegal, you know, the, the, the language of power, the language of power that defines knowledge, administration, you know, economic exchange, legal institutions, you know, or legal practice, you know, uh, are still European languages, you know. Uh, so African languages become subordinate necessarily to those of um, Europe, you know. So any decolonization must really address the issue of languages, yeah. And my formula has been very simple. Uh, I keep on telling people when I, t I talk in Kenya, you know, quite frankly, in other African countries, or in the world for that matter, because this applies to many countries that were formerly colonized, that if you know all the languages of the world and you don't know your mother tongue or the language of your culture, that is enslavement, you know. Uh, but if you know your language or your mother tongue or the language of your culture and then add all the other languages of the world, including European languages to it, then that, that's really empowerment. So it's a question of relationship between the languages. That's the issue. Because that's what, that relationship is the one which was distorted by colonialism. A 
almost a sea change in attitude towards African languages by Kenyan Africans themselves. For one thing, which is very positive right now, the Kenyan government has reintroduced, has come with a policy for reintroduced African languages in Kenyan schools. It should be, in a way, it should not be. In a way, this is something which should have happened a long time ago. Yeah. But it's good whenever it happens, yeah. okay? So we celebrate mm -hmm. that. Uh, and East African education publishers have now produced text that can be used and will be used in many in Kenyan schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good move. My resumption, you see, my first four novels, as you know, were written in English language, you know. Uh, uh, but since 1975, I believe, all my novels have been written in Gikoyo first, you know. Uh, so, for the way, for you know, wrestling with, not uh, Devil on the Cross, yes. you know, it was my first novel in Gikoyo. Yes. Then the second was Matigari. In and then and then um, Wizard the Crow, yes. originally written in Nigekoyo language, my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that I, with those two three novels, I found out increasingly departing from call it the um, kind of critical realism of my previous novels in in. Um, in English, and delving more into the kind of magic realism inherent, really, you know, in African oral storytelling tradition, you know, uh, yeah, and that has, in a way, in a way, released my imagination in a different way, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the Kendamo Yuru, <laughs> you'll find, <laughs> I mean. Is that in a way the form is more like a traditional epic, you know, yes. where yeah. you know, there's trouble with forces of nature, yes. which assume, of course, human form mm -hmm. of ogres and you know and uh, strange things, you know, happening, mm -hmm. and so on, you know. Uh, in this case, it's a, it's a kind of a long point narrative, in in verse, you know, that's that's new for me, in right in the core language. It's, it's new in Ingeko language, and for me, it was my first attempt at mm -hmm. this kind of epic. So I'm very excited by it. And I'm very excited actually by the reception. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, the people do. Um, I've been reading it aloud. Uh, you know, it's been very wonderful to see the effect. When I read certain sections, I see. People rush <laughs> to go and buy the copies. Really? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just nice. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice to see this kind of effect. Yeah, yes, uh, the language is very important you know, because if, if I write in a koyo, I'm more likely to to think, to to, to relate to a koyo orature. Yes. Also, I can draw from that a bit more freely yes. than I did when I was writing in English. You know. It's more organically and more natural, yes. yeah, when I do that. When I did the same, similar things in English, it felt forced. Right. <laughs> You're forcing the connection. Yeah, right. yes. This time, there's, you don't force the, you feel the connection comes, you know, fairly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 organically, I think, yes. yeah. First of all, I'm frightened by the, <laughs> by, or how should I say, uh, there's a lot of high-rise buildings in Nairobi. <laughs> a lot of traffic jumps and so on. Yeah. That in itself is like a nightmare <laughs> from, <laughs> from magic realism. <laughs> I'm finding there's a lot of writing going on 
in many in performances mm -hmm. uh, in many genres but more uh, more performances really in African languages mm -hmm. than ever before okay. yeah um, there is some very good first have there's some really excellent films mm -hmm. of further comedies in African languages even recorded comedies you know by meaning yes. you go to YouTube mm -hmm. you find comedies in Koyo, in Luo, in Kisi that's very exciting and they are in African languages yes. yeah mm -hmm. but also films there have been very good development of films yes. in Kenyan languages mm -hmm. particularly the ones I know best of course are the ones in the Koyo language and I recommend you to look at one or two, actually. You must yes, show it in yes, French. Yes. First of all, there's more writings from Africa. Remember, when I f published my novel, We Not Child, yes, in 1964, yes. it was the first <laughs> novel by an African person in English in East Africa. <laughs> no, yeah, not only in Kenya, but in East Africa, right? <laughs> yeah. right okay. Now, writers in English alone, there are so many now, I can't even follow all of them. Really? Yeah, okay. Mm. Then there are writers in Kiswahili, mm -hmm. and again, there are now so many, I can't follow mm. all the writings in Kiswahili, you know. And in Kikuyu language is beginning now, you know, there are few, not as much as I would like to see, but there are few more uh, people writing in Kikuyu mm -hmm. and getting published in Kikuyu language, yeah, right. So that's altogether very, very encouraging. If I put that side by side with what's happening in comedies and performance yes. and now in film, mm -hmm. right, you know, it's really... Uh, it's very encouraging and very, very positive, I think, yeah. So Swahili is really expanding and I really, my message is for young writers in Swahili, wherever they you are, please write more, yeah? yeah. We should be able to write in our mother tongues and also in Kiswahili, you know, so the more the merrier, yeah. And I like what, by the way, I also, I also like what Diop is doing in Senegal, translating classics of thought into Wolof. Yes. Yeah, that's really great, yeah, you know. That's a very imp really interesting yes. initiative and trend. Yes. Uh, uh, I encourage, trans yeah, I encourage translations. I believe into that, African yeah, yes. I really do the, that's, a, that's a way to go also. Yes. Writing in African languages, but of translating. Yes. So let's go to the yes. French, good French literature, yes. put it into African languages, good English literature into African languages, Russian literature into African languages, yes. Chinese, Japanese, you know, I mean, Korean, you know, yes. uh, Spanish, you know, let's get thrown into African languages. <laughs> Where to tembea, 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 where to t